In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of conversions and kit bashing. You've probably heard the terms conversions and kit bashing thrown around within the hobby of tabletop wargaming miniatures. If you are relatively new to the hobby, you may not know exactly what they mean. So that's what I'm trying to tell you here. Uh, conversions are kind of a overall sort of umbrella for taking a model that comes in a kit generally. Um, you, you can certainly convert models that somebody else already built that you maybe bought on eBay or whatever, but generally these models come in some sort of way where they have to be put together. And then you either um, kind of uh, modify them a little bit so that they no longer are put together in exactly that quite a way, or sometimes you, as you're putting them together, you swap out parts and do different things. It's, um, it's a bit of a black art to some degree because some conversions work very well and look like they were supposed to be that way, like the person who sculpted it made it like that, and other ones sometimes don't fit so great. Kit bashing is a type of conversion. There are others, which I'm not going to touch on too much in this video. Um, there are, you know, you may re-sculpt a model by using green stuff and things like that and, and whatnot. You may um, cut a model apart and repose it in different, you know, there's lots of different ways that you can convert a model so that it doesn't look like everybody else's version of that same model. Kit bashing, in my opinion, is one of the easiest. And the term kit bashing comes from kind of back in the day with scale modeling. People would take multiple kits, model kits, like let's say you had a tank and you were gonna make this tank look more like a weird sci-fi tank. So you would, instead of just building it like it was a normal World War II tank, you might take parts like the, the big 16 inch guns off of a battleship uh, model and then put them on the side to make them look like they're little machine guns because they're of a different scale. If you took the actual 16 inch guns on a model and they were the same scale as the tank, they'd be humongous. But because the whole battleship is only this long and your tank is that long, they're at a different scale. So taking parts from this kit and sticking them to that kit makes them look different and your own. Um, if you look at the original Star Wars movies, numbers four, five, and six, and beyond, uh, pretty much all those spaceships and stuff that you see in those movies, they are covered with parts from scale model kits for World War II stuff um, and, and all, all kinds of weird junk, but predominantly a lot of scale modeling stuff. That's the kit bashing portion of it. What you're doing in conversions when you are kit bashing, let's say Space Marines, just for example, because everyone's seen a Space Marine, is maybe you take a different head and put it on that Space Marine as opposed to the one that came with it. This is sometimes easier said than done, especially when you're talking about monopose mo models, which are the models that kind of only go together the one way as opposed to multi-pose models. I did a video about it just recently, Pachow. And with a monopose model, you can easily convert them, but it's maybe not as easy. With multi-pose models, it's very easy to find a head from a different model and just put it on where the head for this model was supposed to go. With multi-pose, usually the head is separate. Not always, but very frequently the head is separate so that you can pose it. Do you want it to be looking that way? Do you want it to be looking that way? You know, that kind of stuff. So you could just put a different head from a different kit, maybe from Games Workshop, maybe from somebody else. Um, there are plenty of companies out there as well that sell bits uh, that are different from anything else that you might find in a normal kit. I'll talk about those in a bit. But when you are kit bashing a monopose model, they are designed to go together very pretty much one way and very frequently the fewest number of parts possible. This guy here, um, this is a captain, Space Marine captain from Assault on Black Reach. And uh, I didn't want him to have the normal like yelling guy head and I wanted him to look a bit different. So I did some conversions. What I had to do, because that head was all molded onto the front part of his whole you know, thing, I had to cut it away. So um, clippers, those are super important. Uh, X-Acto blade, being careful with both the clippers and the X-Acto blade, also very important. Um, I think I even used a Dremel on this guy to help get rid of the yelling head and then be able to drop in a beaky helmet with the cool little laurel leaves and stuff like that. And, and that's what I was looking for. I wanted that look. So that's a relatively simple kit bash. You can get real fancy with your kit bashes. And I've been doing more and more kit bashing recently with these um, war bands that I'm building for Star Breach. I'm taking a lot of the, frankly, spectacular Necromunda models that are out there, all the different gangs, the Orlocks and the Cawdors and the, you know, all these dudes, and kind of taking parts from other 
kits within that range, other kits within, um, you know, uh, Games Workshop stuff, uh, predominantly Warhammer 40k, but I've also even got some parts on one of the models that's actually from Fantasy. It's a, uh, um, a Beastman arm, and I needed an arm, so I just got rid of the weird Beastman hair. I just kind of ground it off with a sanding tool and, uh, you know, basically used that as he's now got this, you know, bare arm. So looking at different parts that you're holding on to, and you should always be holding on to your parts. That sounded weird. Uh, when you get done with a kit, any of the extra parts that you have on that sprue, cut them off and put them in something to keep them because that's the things that you can use to kit bash later on. It's important to do because otherwise you've got to buy parts from other companies. Now, let's be perfectly honest, this is not the end of the world. There are tons of other companies out there that make great looking um, heads, guns, backpacks, sometimes even full legs or arms, stuff like that, that you can add to models. And um, I've got some favorites. I'm a big fan of uh, Anvil Industries. I recently bought actually a whole bunch of heads from them to use in this Starbreach project, this warband that I'm trying to build, actually two warbands. Um, and just honestly, sometimes just swapping out a head on a model makes it look so much different. And they've got some really interesting things that don't look like normal run-of-the-mill heads that you would see on regular models. It doesn't look like stuff that's just like, well, we're just going to kind of slightly modify a Space Marine helmet and sell it to you. They've got some weird stuff, which is very cool. Makes the models look very different. You paint them right. People might not even know, well, where, where did that model come from? You're like, it's just a, you know, Adeptus Mechanicus guy. I just swapped out the head. And they'd be like, oh, really? That's really cool. That kind of stuff can really change the way a model looks. Um, another company that I like quite a bit is Puppets War. They also do a lot of cool resin stuff, uh, weapons and arms and a lot of really cool heads. A lot of these companies that are doing stuff in resin are coming from Poland, and I'm, I'm just amazed by the neat stuff that they put out, and I really like buying the stuff from them so that I can kind of imagine as I'm buying it, like, what I'm going to use it for. And then once you get the stuff, it's time to start dry fitting. Dry fitting is very essential in uh, conversions, especially in kit bashing. Dry fitting is when you build a model up to a certain point and you're like, I don't want those arms or I don't want that gun on there or I don't want that head or whatever. And then you start looking through your big, uh, you know, container of different bits and start pulling things out and putting them on there and going, huh, is that gonna, because sometimes the head is a little too small. Sometimes it's a little too big. Sometimes there's just something about it, the vibe that's just making it, it does not work right for this sculpt. Um, the other issue is that sometimes it's really just difficult to just, sometimes you can just hold a head near the neck, let's say that has to go on there or hold the gun in front of the body and figure it out and go, yeah, that might work. Another trick is if you need to actually have it sort of sit there is a little bit of poster putty. Poster putty is amazing stuff. Get a little bit of poster putty, stick it into the neck hole, put the head on there and then you can look at it from different angles and stuff like that. Whereas if it's just resting on there, you might turn it and then you lose the head on the floor, which if it's anything like my hobby room, it's gone. So dry fitting, trying to figure out what's gonna work before you start gluing is really super important. And poster putty is frankly spectacular for that. So there's a lot of different types of conversions. Um, additive conversions are when you add things to a model. Just swapping a head, that's just a simple swap. Model's still got a head, it's just not the original head. That's a different thing. There's additive and then there's, of course, subtractive. Sometimes uh, a model has something on it and you don't want that part on there anymore. So you just take it off. It's very simple. You can clip it, use your clippers, sand that part down a little bit, no one will ever know. Um, sometimes with additive though, you just want to be able to add some things to make the model look different. And it's not difficult to do. Most of these things, especially kit bashing, not very difficult to do. This is a, a Chaos Lord, a Nurgle Chaos Lord from back in the day. This was a model that was designed for uh, the Fantasy line back when it was still Warhammer Fantasy on the square bases. But I wanted him to be a Chaos Lord for my 40K. So I just basically added some things. I threw on that kind of old timey Chaos backpack. I threw that um, pistol on his hip and I gave him the shoulder pad that was kind of extra from the um, uh, Plague Marines. And, uh, and then I stuck that big knife right in his chest and he was not even impressed by it. So I liked that kind of, I like to make conversions sometimes if they can tell a tiny little story. Having that knife stuck in old Drippy's chest and him just being like, what? It, that tells a quick little story when you see that model and you're like, oh, okay, I kind of know what that's about. 
that's one of the big benefits to converting. When you take the model the way that the designer originally intended it, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's times when you're like, I want that model to tell a different story. And so that's why conversions are really interesting and that's why they're kind of necessary in certain situations. There are times when a conversion will not work. If you've got a whole bunch of models and they're all supposed to be absolutely lockstep all soldiers who are exactly the same and they're, you know, they've been conditioned since birth, but you've got one who's wearing like a clown hat or something like that, and you're like, well, he's the class clown. That's in most situations, that's a little weird. You can do it. Don't don't get me wrong. But people are gonna be like, why? And you know, you're gonna have to explain yourself over and over again. But when you take something and uh, you've got some sort of cool super soldier, but you've replaced one of his arms completely with like a cool robot arm that you found, well, then that's a pretty quick story. He's a tough guy because he lost that arm and just said, just throw a robot one on. I'll be fine. And and that's that's really what makes the kind of modeling before you even get to the painting and all that kind of stuff in wargaming, really interesting. Oh, and I forgot, uh, down in the description, I posted the, I think, 13 different uh, companies that I found during one of the live shows, uh, the Every Other Sunday show that I do every other Sunday, strangely enough, on YouTube, uh, where I asked a bunch of people in that thing, hey, what are your favorite companies that sell bits that you like to use to convert with? So check in the description below and find out you know like some some companies you've made out of heard of before but if there's any in there that you know of that we all missed put them in the comments as well because i want this kind of video to really be a place a jumping off spot for people to be able to look at and go hey that's very cool i want to buy some of those parts so that i can convert my guys to make them look different than everybody else's that's really the goal